The date was 11 May 2013. Location, Khartoum, capital of Sudan. A big day in my life and the life of our organization, TEDx Khartoum. It was a big event with more than a thousand attendees. The audience was engaged like you were throughout the night. The speakers were on the top game. Everything was going according to plan. And then suddenly, without any warning, this happened. Yes, the Sudanese intelligence services, the secret police, came to our event and told us to shut down. We asked why. They didn't give us a clear answer, but the orders were very clear. Shut down or there will be bigger consequences. Hello, I'm Ruganzu Bruno. I was one of the speakers who were meant to have and share their knowledge on the TEDx Khartoum event yesterday that was unfortunately cancelled. Ruganzu Bruno's name has been gaining prominence for a year or so. He has received several international awards for his work with recycled material. A playground made with 100% garbage collected from the streets of Kambala, the Ugandan capital, is certainly the most famous work by charismatic Ruganzo. An idea on that day in 2013 at TEDx Khartoum that I never got a chance to say was that young people should stop being passengers and become captains of their own ship. I feel that we have this, the potential, but then we have a lot of pressure and tension, like it's not possible. So for me to be able to come from humble backgrounds and they make a difference in so many people's lives, I felt it's something that I wanted to share. And the fact that they, together we had built this beautiful stage and I never got to thank them on a big stage. Like, we've made it. This is not me. This is us. This is because you were involved. This is because you put your time into this and we built it together. It is something that I left and I felt I left without thanking anybody. Lots of young people. I follow them up on social media, we talk on email. I see them growing and becoming better versions. But I always felt like I would have really loved that day to invite them to join me on stage and say, I'm grateful that we built this together. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I just learned one word and it's tutentak, which means thank you. Imagine you are me and you had that story, that one story you had, and you never got the chance in 2013. And now it's 2016 and it's your time. You're on the TED stage again. How excited you would be. And grateful for the people that made it happen. So, standing right before you is Ruganzo Bruno, a young man with ambition, ready to make influence within his community that went to present as a speaker at TEDx Khartoum, which was shut down, and now you hear my story. So I was born in a little village in the southwestern part of Uganda called Kabali, and it takes eight hours bus ride to get to the city, which is everywhere everyone wants to be in the city for the education, 
for a quality life. We have a lot of rural urban migration, and it took me so many years to join university because education is that expensive and not free, like you may have right here in Norway. The freedom to move is not the same. You have to wait for that opportunity, that single opportunity, and utilize it to the maximum. So when I moved from my village, I had dreams, just like any child. I would see planes flying, and I imagine that I'm one of them, of the people seated up there in the plane. And it took a lot of my time to think about how it feels just to be seated in that plane. Because the only time the plane came to my village is when the president or something very special would fly in to our village and we would run with my peers, seven-year-olds running to this well-protected plane that had somebody more important than I was. So you would be just seated outside and being barricaded by a massive army without you getting to actually feel or touch what the plane is. Then it kept being a dream until something happened. So I left Kavali in 2007 and I went to Kampala to study. I had gotten a scholarship, one of the few scholarships you can get in a country like Uganda. Out of 600, we were four who were admitted to do industrial art and design at the university. And while at the university, we were assigned to solve problems that are within our communities. And as a sculpture student, I was building sculptures. I needed to be big. I needed to make it and be an artist of a famous name on the continent, like Anatsui. I needed to be like a Picasso. It was a dream just like you have. You, you, you aim for the greatness all the time. And that being in my mind, I re realized that there was a lot of trash and rubbish in the city. Growing cities have the same problem. There's a lot of trash and waste. And then it was a material that I could just find and pick. So I started using it because I couldn't afford materials to build sculptures. So I built these sculptures out of waste, plastics, trash that is available, sticks, wood, found materials. And when I made these sculptures, there was a lot of connection with my past. Because when I built them, they were prayerful that children initially wanted to come and play with them. So then I had an idea that this time I could actually make a reality by making playgrounds. So as a person who was inspired by my community, I discovered that play is a universal trait. Everybody loves to play. Humans play. Elephants, they play. Trust me, Julius, down there in the zoo, you remember him because he was playing a lot. And that's how I discovered that maybe I could use my community and use the waste that was in the community to build spaces for play in places that there was none. So I gathered my members and we talked to the community leaders, the children were involved, and we collected the trash. And one of the biggest sculptures that we built was the plane. Of course it had to be. It wasn't only my dream, it was also the children's dream to be in a plane. But this time, it wasn't going to be flying. It, it had to be pushed. So the excitement of being there by myself and watching something we had built together, and the excitement 
ambitious in the children's eyes when they knew that finally it could get to a point when you go in the plane and you moved around. It brought me to a fact that it's possible that I could build and create my community with the little resources that are around by using what is around us. So this year, as a master's student, I've learned that I could learn from what the children were drawing, their ideas, and bring them back to life. Not just my ideas, because the children are the end users of these playgrounds. But what is happening everywhere in the world? Where are the children getting involved in the creation of these play spaces? Somebody's deciding, let's put a playground here. Let's put a playground here. But how are you getting their ideas? Because you're scared that it's not safe enough. But I'm going to ask you, how many of you, as children, fell off from a mango tree? At least I did several times. What is your memory of praying as a child? Was it on this uh, slide and swing? Or it was something a bit more creative and crazy? So when I ask children every time to sketch their ideas, they make drawings that are so surreal and marvelous and dreamy. And when we want to create it, it becomes a bit like, how is it going to be possible? Where is this living? Are they coming from space or from NASA? Where are they getting this idea? So I involve them in a way that the ideas that they create, they engage in deciding what play means to them. And this is one important message that I have for you today. Because this year, in 2016, I was at the School of Physically Handicapped in Kampala, the only and the oldest school we have. And they didn't have a playground. And we sat down and said, OK, what is in our resources? What is around us? Is it broken wheelchairs? Is it the tires? Is it the tools? What can we get and what can we use? And we were able to build a prescape out of the waste that was available with the resources that we have. And it's something that I feel that it has a lot to do with human creativity, human development. Play is very vital in our lives. And it's something that we need to return back to our children. We need to recycle the way play is decided today and engage them and enjoy these beautiful smiles that we can create all over the world. So my dream is to create as many playgrounds as possible, but not just as an individual, but with all of you. So I want to set out and build concepts on a site where it's open sourced. You know, Africa is full of a lot of great ideas, and open source is one of the way we are getting in there. I want to open up Play so that you can submit your sketches from the part of the world that you're living in, your ideas, things you never thought could work. Other people can use them. And as we see the world, we have to be as children so that we are able to understand the marvelness, the small nitty bitties that are embedded in life. And in that, we'll be able to contextualize the world around us. Thank you.